What is going on guys? My name is Kenji and welcome back to my channel. Hope it's not the first time you're watching one of my videos, but just in case it is, I'm a final year medical student and also a biomedical science graduate studying at King's College London. So guys, in part one of this video, I showed you my entire workflow process of actually how to go from a blank page to a first class essay. In part two of the video, I showed you guys exactly what to include in each section of your essay. And now in part three, we're gonna be talking about how to actually put the final bits of icing on the cake to really get you the those top marks. So in this video, I'll be giving you guys six different tips that I highly recommend you guys use in order to finally get those top marks in your university essays. So without further ado, let's go ahead and get started. So the first tip that I really want to tell you guys is that if you want to get the top grades in university essays, originality is key. Now, of course, if you're in your first or maybe even your second year of university, what you really need to do is be able to take different papers, different scientific papers, and then put them all together to write your own essay. And obviously, because you're just starting off your scientific career, you may not be able to give that much originality in your essays. But certainly when you move on to your final year or your third year in biomedical science or whatever degree you're studying, that is when they'll definitely expect you to have a lot more originality in writing your essays. You'll be expected to be able to critically analyze the literature and also be able to come up with your own strong opinions and justifications on why you believe something about the topic that you're writing about. Again, you'll be expected to be able to actually critique different papers, be able to actually take a paper, look in that paper, Paper, open it up and say, okay, why did the actual authors use this particular scientific method? Why did they perform these particular experiments? What was the problem with the actual work that they performed? And be able to take it that step further to produce your own work, produce your own originality, obviously starting off with the concepts that you got from different scientific papers, but then taking a step above and producing your own opinions, your own judgments, and also your own work as well. And by the way, if you guys want an exact example of how I critiqued my first class essays, I'll leave a link down below in the description for my ebook on a specific example of a paper that I critiqued in university. So that's the first tip, let's move on to the next tip. The next tip that I wanna tell you guys about is actually how to critique your own essay. Now, one thing that I really believe is the people who get top marks in their essays are not just the people who just sat down, write an essay, maybe read it once or twice and submitted it straight away. It's people who actually know how to critically analyze their own essay and making sure that it's the best essay that can possibly be. So the actual method that I'll give you guys is what I was suggested in university, one of my actual university lecturers and professors actually told me this key key method that I've been using since day one. The method that I use to actually review my essays is once I've actually written out the essay, what I'll do is I'll click save, I'll put it onto my desktop and I will not touch that essay for at least two days. So I'll do other things, literally not open it up at all. And two days later, I'll come back to my essay with a fresh pair of eyes, having forgotten what, you know, mostly what I've written and actually critique my essay as if I was critiquing someone else's essay. And after that two or three days time, what I realized is that I do spot some really key mistakes that I made. Maybe there's a problem with structure, maybe it's just the grammar, but having that kind of period of refreshment, period to just forget about what you wrote can really make the difference between between a 2-1 and also first class essay. The second way that I also review my own essays is that when I come back to it two days later, what I'll also do is read it out loud. Now, this is something that I really suggest all my students to do because once you actually read something out loud, it's very different to reading your head. When you're reading something in your head, I promise you, you will convince yourself that everything you've written is beautiful, it all makes sense, and the grammar is perfect. But if you actually read your essay out loud, you, you when you're actually vocalizing what you've written, you will realize there may be problems with your grammar, maybe there should be a full stop or a comma here and there, maybe you've been speaking for the last 45 seconds and this sentence is just too damn long, but actually being able to speak it out loud will help you identify any sort of problem you have in your essay. And the final way that I suggest you review your work is to send it to a friend or a colleague in the year above or maybe someone who knows more than you do about how to write an essay. Now obviously don't send it to people in your year because they're probably on the same level as you and maybe they might plagiarize your work but if you have a friend or a family member in the field that you're working with maybe a friend in the year above you nine times out of ten I would contact a friend that I know and I trust I'll send them my work and they'll give me some feedback on how I actually performed especially if it's a really important essay maybe it's your dissertation that you have coming up if it's really really key 
key and it's a really key uh, bit of coursework, make sure you're sending it to people to have it reviewed by them to give you opinions on your work. That's the next tip. Let's move on to the next one. The next tip that I have for you when writing your essays is to use your seniors and use your lecturers to your advantage. Now, I know sometimes you may have a harsh, you know, kind of uh, examiner, a harsh lecturer who's actually sent you your coursework. And of course, if they say to you that they're not accepting any drafts, then you have to kind of accept that. But there were many, many cases in university, including the when I was writing my dissertation, where I just needed a bit of help. For example, one of the bits of coursework that I had in my second year of university was quite difficult. I definitely was struggling with what to write. So what I did is I emailed the person who actually sent us the essay and I asked them if they can give me some feedback on the rough kind of plan that I did. And I actually met up with them for about 20 minutes. They read through my essay plan and they gave me the go ahead and also some tips about what I need to be writing about and what I need to do to actually give me the best grade possible. Once I took those points that they mentioned and I converted that into my first draft, Again, I then emailed them and asked them if I can meet them again to just have a read of my first draft and let me know what they think. And coincidentally, or maybe not coincidentally, that piece of coursework ended up with me getting the highest grade in the year. And I'm entirely certain and entirely sure that the reason why I did so well in that piece of coursework is because I had the help of my senior and it was completely allowed, you know, it's up to their discretion. And I met with them, they helped me out with my draft and I did that a number of times particularly when I was writing my biomedical science dissertation, my um, actual supervisor was happy to read my introduction, was happy to then read my methods when I actually wrote it eventually, and also my main body and conclusion. And once I actually wrote the whole entire thing from the start to the end, he then actually allowed me to send him the full draft and he also reviewed it again, pushing it up to a first class that I eventually went on to achieving. So use your lecturers wisely and make sure that you get the help as much as you can. So that's the next point, let's move on to the next one. All right. So another tip that I constantly tell all the students that I help with, with essays is something that I call the FBR principle. I don't think I made this principle myself. I probably stole it off someone else, but the key point actually is really important. The FBR principle stands for F being fast, B being bad and R being wrong. So whenever you actually begin writing your first draft, bear in mind the FBR principle. Your first draft is not going to be perfect. It's going to be fast. You're gonna to to type it very fast. It's gonna be bad. It's not gonna be the best piece of work. And finally, it's gonna be wrong. So it's not going to be correct. And that's completely fine. I think oftentimes when we're writing essays and we really wanna get a first class, we really wanna do um, very, very well, we have this thing in our head that it has to be perfect. And everything that we type on the paper has to be the best thing possible and that's not entirely correct and that's not entirely right and that actually might stop you from being able to even write your essay so bear in mind the FBR principle and then once you make your first draft that's when you can then look at it and say how do I now take this from a 2-1 or 2-2 to a first class let's actually analyze what I've written let's maybe send it to my friends send it to my lecturers and now convert this into a first class essay so bear in mind the FBR principle don't be too hard on yourself when you actually start writing your essay and once you finally write the first draft then you can focus on perfection and making it perfect. Now, when I review essays for people, the first thing that I also think about is, has this person used figures? Have they used tables that are applicable to their work? Now, figures are such an easy thing that you can add to your essay that can really give you a lot more marks. Whenever I'm reading someone's essay and they've just spent 500 words explaining some complex topic that could have been completely explained by one simple figure, I always think to myself, you know, why do they not just find a very good, valid and scientific figure just to add to their work. And in my last degree, I was always told that if you want to get the top grade, you definitely have to include a figure. So when you're actually writing your work, do think to yourself, you know, is it worth spending 500 words explaining this topic? Or could I just include a figure to then talk about to make my work look one more professional, more attractive, and finally also help to add to the scientific kind of nature of my work by using a correct figure. So when you're reading scientific papers, any sort of paper that you're reading to write your essay, try and have a look at the figures that they've actually used. Try look at each figure and say, could I actually take this and add it to my essay and reference it? Will this actually add to my work? And also really, really key thing, if you can create your own figure, you know, go onto your computer and create your own figure, that is something that people and examiners love so much. In your essays, if you can actually take a concept and create a figure and actually write that you made this figure yourself, that is going to show originality and it's also gonna show hard work. So think about what sort of figures you can add to your work and then take it a step further and make it even better when you're writing about it in your essay. And the final tip that I have for you guys when writing any sort of coursework is to try and make it as attractive as possible. Now I know trying 
to make your work um, you know, look attractive kind of sounds a bit weird. It doesn't you know, really sound right. But oftentimes when someone is actually critiquing your work and looking at your work, they will straight away think, has this person actually put in the effort to make this content of work look attractive? And think about it, if you go to the library and you pick up a book, the first thing you will judge is the cover. The first thing you'll judge is how attractive this book looked to me. What does the title look like? Is the actual content you know, nice and relevant? Are there figures inside? Does it look and is it structured actually quite well? These are key things that the examiner will look at and will be biased towards and they will straight away say, does this look like a first class paper or does it not? And I've actually written down a few things that you guys should think about when thinking about how attractive is your work. The first thing to think about is, does my work need a title page? For example, in my dissertation, it was a 20,000 word dissertation. So I had a front title page with my university logo there and also um, the title and everything like that. So title page can make it look a lot more attractive. Secondly, the figures need to be in the right place um, with the correct figure legend as well. Again, they will look at your figures and say, is this figure legend correct? Have they used the correct font, the correct format? All of those things definitely add points to your essay. And then finally, you might also want to add a contents page. For example, again, in my dissertation, it was super long and I added a contents page to make it look more professional. And also, you may want to add page numbers as well. So page numbers in the corners may also add attraction. And, that sounds really weird. But make your work look a lot more attractive and also again, making sure that it is structured very, very well. Again, if you want an example of how you can do this, then check out my ebook as well. If you have any comments at all about how to write an essay or any questions, please leave a comment or question down below in the description. If you received any value from this video, please leave it a thumbs up. Make sure you subscribe with notifications on. And before you go, here are a bunch of videos on my channel to do with essay writing that I think that you guys will definitely benefit from. Thank you so much for watching and I'll see you guys on the next one.